So believe it or not, we have already written code to handle the validation of JWTs. We can already accept JWTs, but the one issue is that we can't generate JWTs yet. We need to write code that's going to handle the generation. There's many ways to do this, but I will be, in my opinion, this is totally my opinion, it's just easier to write your own service, to literally create tokens outside of identity. There are tools that will allow you to maybe just type in something on the command line, but I think it's way easier and it's way better just to create your own service. But before we get into creating the service, Let's talk about claims versus roles because this is very important. And then if you don't understand this, it's going to cause you a lot of trouble. So if you've ever used any type of software, you've come in contact with roles and roles are great. But what has happened is that as apps have become more complex, it's almost impossible for the concept of roles to keep up with the complexity of apps. Because think about it. What if you had 20 different roles and each time that you needed to get this role, you had to get it from the database. And that is the limitation with roles. In order to actually get a role and to utilize a role, you have to hit the database and the database has to be utilized. But this is where claims come in. Claims are the ultimate. They're literally just like a tag but they are associated with the user. And the best thing about claims and what makes claims a lot better than roles and why Microsoft has chosen to kind of distance itself from roles is that claims don't use the database. And claims also give you way more flexibility because you can just stuff a claim into a JWT and you can be on your way. And that's actually what we are about to do. What's going to happen is that we are going to generate the JWT on the server and we're going to stuff it with these things called claims and within these claims we can have almost like roles they are pretty much just roles key value pairs of things that are going to describe what the user does and what the user can do but the great thing is is that we can also send it in the form of a jwt so the user can also have all of these roles or all of these claims in these role like things within the JWT. And each time that they send a request, all of this data is going to be within our JWT. And that's the beauty of it. And as soon as it enters the server, the JWT is going to be blown away. And what's going to happen is that these values are going to be associated with the user each time that they use the endpoint. And you'll be able to access these through the HTTP context. So if that's a little confusing for you, let's just go through it one more time. The user is going to submit their email, they're going to log in, and what's going to happen is that they are going to send their JWT to the server. When they are authenticated, this thing called a claims principle is going to be created. And within this claims principle, we will get access to all of these values that we saw over here. Like, is the, you know, the username, the email, is it a paying user, the time zone? And the concept of a claims principle is almost like a wallet. It's just like this little object that keeps track of everything. It's kind of got a funky name. It's kind of got a weird name, claims. What does claims mean? But claims is pretty much just like a wallet or some type of little authentication wallet that's going to hold things like the email, the user, and the pass name. And we can use these we can use this object, we can use this HTTP user context all throughout the app as long as the user is logged in. So that's pretty much it, but let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code, and let's create our JWT service. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a service folder. Remember that a service is very different from a repository. A repository is for database calls. A service could be anything else, any type of abstraction. But first we need to go into our interfaces and we need to actually create an interface that's going to handle our token service. So I'm gonna call this iTokenService. And I'm going to go into here and I'm going to create a method that's called create token. And within this create token, all that we're going to do is we're gonna pass in our app user. Looking good. So interface is taken care of. Now we go into the service folder. If you haven't created it, make sure to create it. And I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to make the token service. So within the token service, we are, of course, we are going to inherit from our iToken service interface and make sure that we implement it. 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a CTOR. We're going to go into our constructor and we need to bring in a couple things. The first thing that we need to do is we need to bring in our I configuration because we're going to have to pull stuff from our app settings JSON. And if you don't know, you might not know what app settings JSON is. So we need to pull stuff from here. We need to actually go into this app settings JSON. And this is what this I config is or I configuration, I should say. Next thing that we're going to do, we're going to go up here. And we're going to bring in the I configuration. So I configuration, and we'll call this underscore config. Then we're going to go down under here. We're going to say private read only, and we're going to bring in what's called a symmetric security key. Now, a symmetric security key, it's really not that complicated, but we'll talk about it here in a second because I don't want to kind of get into it right now because it because it is a little confusing. Uh, okay, so that's all that we need. Now we need to bring in the actual config. So we'll bring in the config object so we can access the config at our very whim. And we'll go down here and we're going to bring in the key. So we'll say new symmetric security key. And we're going to have to use encoding. And we're going to go UTF-8. The reason that we use encoding is that we have to turn it into bytes. It's not going to accept it as just a regular string. And bytes is basically a fancy word for, we're gonna break it up. It's good. Instead of it just being a full string, we're going to break it up into individual little bits. Then we go into here, we're gonna go config, we'll go JWT and we'll say, this is where we're going to get our key. Now a key, and the reason that we're using the config is because the key is very important. Do not give out your key. The key is very dangerous because like I said, if anybody gets your key, they can make tokens because JWT is totally by itself. The whole entire thing is hinged on the actual signing keys. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to put claims within our token. Remember that we have this thing called claims, which are basically like your driver's license, your passport, but in more computer terms, it would be things like email, username is time zone use uh like i said username is paying you can put all of these things in here but in our case all that we're going to put is the email and the username and these are things that you can use to identify the user and express what the user can and cannot do within your system very similar to a role but just more flexible so we're going to go into here we're going to create a claim and we're going to say jwt registered and these are just the reason that we have to add this JWT register claim names and all of these funky words is because that is the standard of JWT. JWT has all these funny words inside of it. And it is kind of strange seeing all these words, but that's just kind of, it is what it is. That's kind of just the standard. And I got some kind of misspelling here. So let's see here. Okay. Using JWT tokens. And yes, that is what we want. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to say new claim once again, and we're going to do the same exact thing. JWT registered claim names dot given name. And we're going to say user dot username. So a given name is pretty much the same thing as a username. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to create the signing credentials. Signing credentials. It's just a funny word for what type of encryption do you want? We're going to call this uh, call this encryption. You can call this, but I'm going to call this creds. And I'm going to go new signing credentials. So signing credentials. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pass in the key. And the key is what you specified in your app, your app settings.json. And we're going to go security algorithm. And this is just the form of encryption that we want to use. So I'm going to go HMAC SHA. So HMAC SHA 512, we're going to say signature. And that is just a form of encryption. Next thing that we're going to do is this is where we actually create the token. We're going to create the token as an object. And what's going to happen is that .NET's going to take care of everything else for us and create the token. So we pretty much create an object representation of the token. And .NET takes over and says, hey, I got gotcha. you. I'm gonna go ahead and create this token for you. And it's called Security Token Descriptor. Again, very funny name. 
they've got a lot of weird names in here, but it is just what it is. So next thing we're going to do is you wrap it within a claims identity. And a claims identity is pretty much the wallet. So we have the things like a license. We have a passport, although you probably don't put your passport in your wallet, but you get the picture. And that is specific to .NET. So we're going to go... Uh, there's different parts of the JWT. So the JWT also has... Uh, an expiration date because you don't want the token to have too many, too much of a lifetime on it in case somebody was able to get a hold of it or actually steal somebody's token. You don't want the token to last forever. So we're going to go signing credentials and then we are going to go issuer and we're going to go inside here. We're going to say config and say JWT. JWT issuer. And again, we specified this in the actual um, app settings.json. And then one last thing, we have to create the audience. And we're going to go into here. We'll say JWT and we'll say audience, just like that. So after we've pretty much created the object representation of a token, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to whip out the token handler and the token handler is a method that's going to you guessed it create the actual token for us so we're going to say jwt security token handler so we go down here jwt security token handler then after that we say bar token and we use utilize our token handler to create the token so we say create token and then we pass in the token descriptor after this, we're gonna go return. So this, the previous method is going to create an object representation of the token, and then here, and actually create the token itself. So, but we don't want to return the token in the form of an actual object. We want to return it in the form of a string. And token handler also has a nice little method called write token that's going to return it in the form of a string. So back to the symmetric security key. Symmetric security key is pretty much what's going to be used to encrypt it in a unique way that is only specific to our server so that people cannot mess with the actual integrity of the token. Here in a second, I'm going to show you that you can actually read the inside of the token, but what makes JWT special is we have the symmetric security key that encrypts it and it makes sure that the security token is not tampered with. So we're going to go here and that looks good. The next thing after this is that our signing key is not specific enough or it's not long enough. So I'm going to go into here and I'm just going to add a huge string of random numbers. And it's gotta be very long or it's going to give you an error stating that it's not long enough. It has to be like 512 bytes or something. Now what we need to do is we need to go down into our program.cs. This is gonna be really easy. And we need to actually add the dependency injection. So I'm gonna go into here I'm going to go builder.services.addscoped. So I'll say add scoped. I'm going to say I token service. And I'm going to say token service. And this is going to add our dependency injection. Next thing that we need to do is that when we register, we're actually going to return a token. So on the register, we need to create a new DTO. Our DTO, and I'll show you here, the reason I'm gonna create a DTO is because right now we're only returning user created, but we could just return the string, but I think it's better if we actually return the username, the email, and the token. I think it just makes things look a little bit more professional, but you could just totally toss the token in there if you want to, but I'm not, I'm choosing not to do that, but that's just me, you don't even have to. So I'm gonna go inside the account. We've already created a registered DTO. Then I'm gonna go up here, and I'm going to create a new user DTO. And then what we want to return is a prop. So we're gonna go prop, we're gonna go string. We're gonna return our user name then we're going to return the password or not the password i'm sorry we're going to return the email okay so we're going to return the email and then after this this is when we're going to actually return the token so i'm going to say string i'm going to go over here and i'm going to say token okay so now what we need to do is we need to go back into our actual controller and we're going to import our token service so i'm going to go private uh, read only I token service. I'm going to say 
token service. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the constructor. So I'm going to say I token service, token service, spelled service wrong. And then go here and we're going to say token service, token service. Fucking good. Okay, so going down into the register, all that we need to do is go inside of here. So go ahead, get rid of the user OK. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to say new and say new user DTO, new user DTO. Then go down here. We're going to say username is equal to app user dot username. And we're going to say email is equal to app user dot email and say token is equal to underscore token service. And all we have to do is just go ahead, toss it within our token service. So say app user, just like that. Looking good. And I think that that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do a cold restart. Fingers crossed. We did a lot of work here. So fingers crossed that it works. I'm going to go ahead, reopen this back up. CD inside API and go .NET watch run. Okay, so started up correctly. Now what we need to do is go inside of our register. I'm going to say investor 2222. I'm going to put two twos in there. Investor 222. Investor 2222 at gmail.com. And I'm going to go pass word underscore two, 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 two. Looking good. And we've got our token. So let's go into here. Let's take this token and let's make sure that our token is what we want. So I'm going to go into JWT decode. So I'm going to, I just typed in JWT decode on Google. I'm going to go into here and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it and make sure that it looks like what we want. So we've got our email, we've got our given name, our issuer and our audience looks good. Everything is looking correct. The only thing that we need to do now is actually do our login. So anyways, next video is going to be the login. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.